Hello, welcome to part one in a series of lectures on how to observe the sun at local apparent noon for a position fix. My name is Commander Chris Kreitlein, U.S. Navy retired, and I will be presenting these lectures as your instructor. Right now we're on my Cape Dory 30 cutter, Miss Marley sitting at the marina. We have the sun up here, and I'm going to show you the mechanics of observing the sun at local apparent noon. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll use the observation to work up a position fix. What do you need? Well, first of all, you're going to need a sextant. This is a Davis plastic sextant. I think it's a Mark 15. Uh, plastic sextant is really all you need. You're probably going to have to correct some errors in the sextant, uh, align it, so to speak, before you use it. But for a student, uh, a plastic sextant is all you need. They're a lot cheaper, and if you bang it around, you don't have to worry about it that much as you would with a $600 metal sextant. Of course, a metal sextant is better, but for a student, this is all you need. I have both, but I actually use the plastic sextant a lot more because that way I don't have to worry about jumping in after it if I drop it over the side. Okay, so you need a sextant. You also are going to need a chronometer that will give you universal time. We'll talk about universal time in the next lecture, lecture. but a digital watch set to universal time. You're going to need a clipboard and the proper form for shooting the sun at local apparent noon. These are available for download at globazon.com. And you'll need a pencil, of course. If you're observing uh, the stars at night or at, at civil twilight you'll probably need a flashlight to read the sextant and write on the form but for the sun at noon of course you don't need that now let's get into the mechanics of this uh, sextant of course uh, you will make your your alignments of the sextant before you start your shots uh, the sextant has filters on it that you'll have to use to protect your eyes from the brightness of the sun. Uh, sextant will come with a little telescope, uh, five power, one power telescope, um, or it has just a, a hollow tube, and I generally just use the hollow tube when shooting the sun at noon. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, you'll, you'll look through the sextant, you'll locate the sun, uh, adjust your filters as necessary so that you can see the sun as well as the horizon. When you get the sun very close to the horizon, make sure you've clicked in the swing arm and then you begin to use the micrometer to adjust it while you're swinging the sextant very easily side by side or side to side. I'm going to bring this up to the horizon here. I've got the sun in there. It looks very bright. I'm swinging it, adjusting the micrometer to bring. You can either use the lower limb of the sun or the upper limb of the sun. Generally one uses the lower limb unless the, upper, unless the lower limb of the sun is obscured. The lower limb of course is the bottom edge of the sun. So I generally put it above the horizon and then while swinging the arc, swinging the sextant in a slide arc, making sure that it's as close to the horizon at the bottom of the arc as possible. And then when I get it where I like it, I'll say, if you have an assistant, you'll say mark. And they will then look at the chronometer, note the time, and write it on the form. Then at your leisure you can read what's on the sextant. So if you're by yourself as I am now, I will swing the arc, adjust it until it's just on the horizon, and then when I've got it right where I like it, okay, I'll look at the, the uh, chronometer, 59 and 54 seconds. I'll then carefully place the the uh, sextant down, write the time, then look on the sextant and read the degrees 
minutes and seconds or tenths of a minute off the sextant and record that. Now what you want to do when you're shooting the sun at noon, and I'll talk more about this in part two of, of this series, but at this point the very first sight you take is not that critical. What you're really doing is setting yourself up for the second sight. I want to put another filter down here. Okay. Taking another sight, noting that, and making sure that the sun is still rising in the sky. If the sun is descending, if your sextant is reading down closer to towards zero from wherever it was previously, what does that mean? It means the sun is descending and you've already missed local apparent noon. So that would be unfortunate. Of course, you have to wait for tomorrow to try it again. But uh, for these first two second, these first two sextant shots, what I want to do is just confirm to myself that I've not missed local apparent noon. And in this case, I haven't because the sun is still rising. So we can then set ourselves up for the process of uh, shooting the sun at local apparent noon. Uh, please uh, tune in to part two of the series and we will talk about what you need to do as far as how often to shoot it and, and how to record that and to determine the exact moment of local apparent noon.